So in this video, we're going to talk about mathematical induction. Basically what that means is if I know it's true in the base case, I'm going to call this P of 1, then I'm going to pretend it's true for you know, some number down here, I'm going to call this P K, then I'm going to try and show, this means show, that it's true for P K plus 1. And this P just means, you know, any statement. So like, you know, the number one is the color green or something like that. And I want to show that all all numbers are green. Well, if I can show that K is green, then I can, and I, from, from knowing that K is green, showing that PK plus one is green, then I've proven my, my statement. So basically, you know, the idea behind this is if I can take any number I want and show the next one's true from knowing the previous one was true, then I can, you know, start then it's true all the time because you can start with one and then show two is true, take two, show three is true, you know, and go all the way up. So this here is called the base case or basis case. Some people say, I think that's silly. It's base case. Um, it's your first case, the thir first thing you do. So then you're going to take this guy and you're going to suppose He's true. You don't know it, you're just going to say, you know, I'm going to proceed with my life as if this guy is true. Um, this is called the inductive hypothesis. Right, like, you know, you're, you're just going to suppose it's true, you're hypothesizing it's true. Um, and then to start showing that this guy is true, this is going to be your inductive step. So the best way to um, teach mathematical induction is through an example. So let's do one of the you know most basic um, theorems in in number theory, or I guess in math. You know it's a pretty good equality. Is the sum from i equals one up to n of i. So this just means sum. So you start with the index and you go one plus two plus three plus four all the way plus 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 all the way up to n. And, and this could be, you know, any number of things. Um, you just take one, sub it in, then plus the next number up from one, sub that in, et cetera, et cetera. Um, hopefully you guys are familiar with this notation. So what we're gonna prove, we're gonna prove that this is equal to n times n plus one all over two. Okay? So to start this, we're going to use do the base case. So, so this is our statement P. Um, some people use this. This is P of n. Okay. So basically, P is this entire statement. It's not just it's not just this half. It's it's the whole the whole thing. So the entire idea that one side is equal to the other side is is this statement P. P isn't just you know this half or this half. P is that the sides are equal. Um, so the statement P is the sides are equal. Okay, so for the base case, we're going to do P of 1. So we notice N is here, so we have N, 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 and we're just going to replace that. So P1, note it's not equal, it's just, just these dots, is the sum I equals 1 up to 1 of I is equal. And this is the, what side is this? This is the left hand side, okay? So we have to do both the left hand separately from the right hand side, okay? So, so P1 would be this entire statement, you know, one, one plus one all over two, this is P1, but we wanna prove it's true, okay? We don't know, we don't know it's true yet. Um, we wanna go through and, and show that it's true. So we're gonna start with the left hand side. The left hand side is equal to so the sum from one up to one, so we just do one. The left hand side equals one. Okay, let's try the right hand side. So that's this side here. Um, that's gonna equal, you know, this guy. So one, one plus one divided by two is one times, one plus one is two, and then times one is two, so we have two over two, and that's equal to one. Are they equal? Yep, so we say left hand side equals right hand side, and that's true. Okay, so now we, we wanna do the inductive step or the inductive hypothesis. Okay, so we're gonna suppose 
for some k in the natural numbers that p of k is true. So that is, suppose the sum from i equals 1 all the way up to k of just i is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. We're going to suppose that that is true. Suppose it holds. Okay? So now we move on to the inductive step. Okay? So in this step, what we're going to do is we're going to consider. We're going to consider. We don't have it. We're just considering. We're just going to consider the left-hand side, okay? We're going to consider the sum of i equals 1 up to k plus 1 of i. So we're going to consider the left-hand side of p k plus 1, okay? So we're just going to look at this when n is equal to k plus 1, okay? So we're just looking at the next number. We want to eventually show that, you know, both sides are equal. So I'm going to do a little aside. Asides are great. So in the aside, you can show what you want to prove. We want to show that p k plus 1 is true. I'm just going to write t for true. So let's write out what p of k plus 1 is. P of k plus 1 is going to be the sum from i equals 1 up to k plus 1 of i. And that's all we're going to do is sub in k plus 1 for n over here. So we get k plus 1 and then k plus 1 plus 1, that's going to be k plus 2. k plus 2 all divided by 2. Okay, we want to show that's true. I'm just going to take a second and I'm going to expand this so it's a little easier to see. We're going to get k squared plus 3k plus 2. 2 divided by 2. Okay, I just, you know, multiplied that out. So, if we have this, the fancy thing that we can do with these summations is we can split them up. So we know it's true for pk, so we probably want to get this guy alone so we can do something with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as i equals 1 up to k plus the sum of i equals k plus 1 up to k plus 1. Okay, so because this is the next guy over, you know, k and then k plus 1, this is, you know, we could have combined these to do this, so we just split it up. Okay, so if I rewrite this, well, from the induction hypothesis, i h, I'm going to call it, so from the inductive hypothesis, we know that that is equal to this guy right here. Okay, so we have k times k plus 1 all over 2. Okay? Well, what's this guy? Well, it's just the sum of one of i of k plus 1 up to k plus 1. So this is just going to be k plus 1 as we sub that in there, right? Okay. So now we have some, we need have a little bit of algebra to do. So I'm going to expand this guy and I get k squared plus k over 2. And I'm really, I want a common denominator because I really want to add these guys together. Notice that this is just a single guy on the top with a 2 on the bottom. So I'm going to want a 2 on the bottom here. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 and divide it by 2. So we get 2 times k plus 1 over 2. And if we write that out, it's going to be k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2 all over 3. I mean two, wow, I don't know how I got a three there, over two, <laughs> right? So I just added that together and look what happens if I add it together equals k squared plus three k plus two over two. And that's what we want. So we know that the case is true. So then you generally you wanna write a little therefore statement. Therefore, p of k plus one is true whenever P of K is true. So it's only true whenever PK is true. If PK weren't true, we wouldn't be able to get this because we, we would lose this step. So all we've done is we've proven that P of K plus one is true whenever PK is true, but because of the base case is true, 
it's true all the time. So, you know, we don't need this because of the base case. Okay, so you just put a little square because you're done your proof and that's it. That's mathematical induction. There are some practice problems below. If you guys are struggling, put some, put questions in the comments. And if you want, I can give you full solutions as pictures later on. Good luck. I hope this helped with mathematical induction and we'll be back next time for strong induction.